Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Stormblood, and see that Lisa and Gosetsu are now back. So, all right, now can I go free? Ah. Oh. What now, you jerk? Okay. All right, now you're really just being a jerk. Like, do this or go free, or else, you know, we're gonna enslave the rest of you. Oh, you're a real piece of work. Man, you boys are really thirsty for him. All righty then. Creeping me out. So, yeah, regardless of what gender you are, you and Gosetsu are the ones who have to handle this task. So yeah, this is where the story gets just... Okay. Don't speak of my friend that way. Oh, shut up. Because, again, we're just completely killing time until the Nottam happens, and none of this is gonna pan out to be useful for us winning it. It's just... They drag us here, they say, yeah, we're not gonna press you into service, but you need to do this crap for us or else we're gonna enslave you. Okay, thanks, bye. Like, no! Like, I can understand from, as I said last time, the core point of as a tribe, they, they believe it's their... 
responsibility to protect and care for the rest of the Zela. And... That perspective is, on paper, completely fine. But they don't act like, you know, it's any kind of, of great honor or treat it like a responsibility. They treat it like they should revel in the glory of, of, of doing so. Um, and they come off as extremely overly arrogant as, as a result of it. And it just, it just completely rubs me the wrong way. They, they don't protect the people of the steppe. They lord over them, you know? And obviously you can't have every character in every tribe be a bunch of freaking goody two-shoes, but... To me, it's like, okay, why should I care about you? Why should I care about your tales and your stories and, and traditions, you know? Especially since none of this is going to matter. At all. Oh, that's right. I don't select it. I just do the lookout thing right from here. If I can find it in my doohickey. Well, this is where the grass turns to sand, or whatever the heck he said. <sighs> Never a dull day in the life of an adventurer, is it? to do it from this far. But that matters here or not. Are you okay? Take my hand. It, I don't have cooties. I swear, I know I'm a filthy foreigner, but... Hi. Well, a little complicated story there. <sighs> hey, they were nice to me. Oh, she thinks we're playing games.
So, do we tell her that we're here at the behest of the Ornier, or not? Now we'll get some gloves for my healer. I just got a bunch of gear from Barton's Metal, too, and now it's all being, like, immediately obsoleted. Ugh. Oh, Gosetsu, we're here to educate ourselves. Um, not start a fight? Please, it's not? Y you just said she's clearly not a woman to be crossed. I don't think it's wise to be questioning her words to her own tribesmen and all. Hello again. Thank you for being, well, somewhat friendly to us. How he died matters not. Gesser was a great warrior. He will return to us in time. Not soon enough, Hatun. The Nardom is nearly upon us. Mayhap we should cancel restraint until after. I do not understand. If Gesser is dead, how should he return? Silence! You come to spy on us, knowing naught of our ways. Uh, well, technically you said uh, we have leave to walk among you, so... We're not really technically spying anymore? We know you are fearless, and that you are called the Undying Ones. That is true. None are braver than the Dothal, for we do not fear death. With death, a warrior must dance boldly, fearlessly. For thus does his soul burn bright. Then, in death, his soul shines white, exalted. The flesh rots, but the soul endures. And ere the seasons have turned, so he shall return. When he is glimpsed in the eyes of a newborn, he is blessed with the same name, that he may grow into a great warrior once more. You mean to tell me these newborn babes and fallen warriors are one and the same? Madness! I gave you leave to observe, not to insult our beliefs. Have care what you say. Otherwise, do as you will. Okay, all right, all right, okay, okay. I don't think he was so much insulting them as just expressing... I don't know, how he just doesn't understand. So yeah, their big thing is reincarnation. So apparently we made her a little bit mad, but at least she's still treating us, you know, a bit better than Magna has been treating us, so... So yeah, he's gonna have his little trouble wrapping his head around this whole thing. But sometimes it's good to have your beliefs questioned, you know? Oh yeah, you were you were the one having picking the fight with the Ornier guy. Hi. Yep, 
Okay. So apparently to them, it doesn't matter what gender you're born into at all. Like, the flesh is just a vessel. And it probably, you know, just suits, you know, for biological purposes and nothing more. And they don't really care. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, so that begs the question, how do you guys, like, deal with situations such as that, where, you know, somebody knows somebody return in more than one life, you know? Does that get really weird? How do you handle that kind of thing, you know? So apparently the reincarnation process doesn't take very long. Where is this other... there we go. So they don't remember anything. Yeah. Is that, or is that not going to be a problem for them? Because they don't fear death, so they can, you know, fight as fiercely as necessary and, you know, give them, well, quite the beat down without fear for their own safety, you know? So, is that going to be enough to avail them or not? I mean, against us too, because we're not fighting for them, we're fighting for them all, so... Okay, well, I don't think she's very happy with you right now, but okay. But yeah, at, le at the very least, even though I do not like this part of the main scenario, and I think it slogs all, like, just, just drags everything down, and the pacing is horrible, at least I can give it minor credit for one thing. Knowing their... how their, their tribal beliefs and stuff work is actually valuable information to us in the Nada because we know they're not going to hold back at all. We know they are going to be very dangerous opponents to deal with and we're not going to have a way to like appeal to their better nature or whatever. On the battlefield is where they are their absolute best. So this information actually is somewhat relevant to the Nada. What we actually learned about, you know, the Ornir and, you know, their origins or whatever, None of that actually matters. None of that is going to come to play or is going to avail us in any sort of way or drive the plot otherwise forward. This, at the very least, does, even if it is in a slightly roundabout way. So no tricks, just pure inner strength, I guess. Oh, thanks, he hit a little bit of a nerve there.
So at least they're not completely and completely totally reckless. But I don't know if the same could be said for the Nodum, so... At least in more practical fights, you know, they seem a little bit more resourceful. So apparently she at least likes us enough that hey, hey, you you can you can fight with us too. Um, okay. Yeah, they kind of already have, and I'm really sorry about that. So, I am actually much more fond of Sadu than I ever will ever be of Magni, because at least she, she tries to show somewhat respect and restraint and she she seems to more embrace her responsibilities as a leader and that she also recognizes the shortcomings of the ways of their tribe as she, as she said you know it does take reborn or not it does take time you know for them to be retaught and and, and retrained and everything like that and obviously if y'all die before <laughs> you, you know Everyone reaches an adulthood and can, you know, pro you know, procreate to to create a vessel for a soul to be reborn into. It, it's a dead end. So, you know, their 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 way of life and their fervent beliefs, as strong as they are, still have shortcomings to them. And you don't see such a thing from the Ornir, you know. Like, I, I suppose you could argue you really don't see any from the mall either, but they also don't involve themselves in, in tribal disputes. They, they, they're just nomadic, you know? They go where their gods wish, and they're pretty much a, a peaceful folk, you know? Left for the vultures. It seems an insult to the man. You did, well, you didn't even know him. I mean, I know he means just insult to any living creature as it is, but... Vultures need to eat too! But the soul lives on, they say. These bodies, no more than empty husks, returning to the earth. Seen through those eyes, I suppose the sight is almost comforting. Pardon me? When first I heard the tales, I could not help but scoff. Another queer tribe, I thought, with still queerer customs. Yet having borne witness to their rights, I cannot deny there is a certain logic to it all. A samurai will die for his lord without hesitation or regret. But this is not because he delights in such sacrifice. 
It is because he has faith that his death will serve a higher purpose. There is an awakening in that instant. When the heart sings and the blood burns and his soul his soul finds peace. There is comfort in that. to eat too. Nay, we dare not permit ourselves that luxury, my friend, tempting though it may be. Not while our loved ones yet remain in chains. Oh, glad to see you had your moment. It is a moment I, I do say I, I rather like of, you know, reconciling someone else's different beliefs and, you know, how they can, you know, how, how they both differ and may have something in common with your own, you know, if, if you just look at it from the right direction, you know? And sometimes, sometimes, you know, there are beliefs that are, you know, completely re irreconcilable with each other and whatnot, but... That's neither here nor there. No, it's about it's about learning to question your own biases and stuff like that. Oh, they actually locked them up? Oh my god. Well, if there is a way out, I can't see it. Shame we didn't learn much before they locked us up. Tis little wonder the Oranir won the last Nardum. These people leave naught to chance. Hien, I've had something on my mind for a while, and now... In Alamigo, where I was born, I found it strange that for all the people who supported the resistance, there were just as many who didn't. But then we came to this part of the world and met with the Confederacy and lots of ordinary domans, and almost every single one of them seemed content to just put up with things, no matter how bad they got. They, they all had their reasons, of course, and, and it's not like I don't understand them, but... The thought of it made me so angry. After everything they'd been through, everything the Empire had done to them, how could they not rise up? How could they not fight back? People are pragmatic creatures at heart. They hold on to hope only until they taste true hardship. Then comes fear and regret. Safer not to dream, they conclude at last. For even should a day go by without some new disappointment, the next will only bring more of the same. And so they choose the more sensible option. They learn to abide the indignities and injustices, the pain and the shame, to accept them as normal. Such is the lot of most men. One cannot expect to spur them to action at a moment's notice. But if one who has known their pain can convince them to strive for something greater and rekindle the fire in their hearts. Then they will remember what they have lost and they will rise.
I had someone like that once. I didn't know who I was or who I wanted to be, and he risked his life to show me the way. Then honor him by doing the same for others, with all your might and main. You know, when my homeland fell 25 years past, I was still in my mother's womb. Never have I known a free Doma. But my father did, as did many of my fallen comrades, as do many of my people now. It may be no more than a dream to me, but if I do not chase it, then who will? The way you carry it all, you're just the same. Hmm? As you? Oh, no. Not me. Definitely not me. I meant the Warrior of Light. Out there, somewhere. Doing what needs to be done. I won't have you put me to shame any longer. I'm going to seize the future I want, with my own two hands. At least you've been doing nothing but trying that this whole time. She spends... I, I get why, but she spends way too much time just, just utterly just looking down on herself and what she's capable of. Like, she, she can do so much more and she has, but she's too busy comparing herself to us that she just she just can't see through it just yet it's it's kind of a disappointment but again I, I i do understand why and as much as this episode is slogging on and i'm really really sorry i'm not paying attention to my time lately but that's the first real conversation lisa and he and have and i wish there was more to it and they would kind of make a comparison of their lives and how the empire takeover hasn't hasn't has and has not affected each of them in various ways because i think it is important to both of them and what they strive for because they're around like the same age but they grew up under very very different different circumstances as hissy said the empire took over before doma before he was even born lise actually does remember a little bit about alamigo while the Empire was setting up shop there. So she she has some, if not very mem many, memories of, you know, what it was like. You know, what it was like to flee. He, you know, sat up in a cushy damn castle all damn day. Under Imperial rule or not, he still lived a privileged life. As did she, but just an entirely different way. She grew up, and I, th I really hate how the game just completely almost forgets about this entire thing. Because I believe it is so important. She spent most of her upbringing in the Charlian motherland. She is educated. She grew up before she got involved with, you know, after Edith dying and becoming, you know squeezing her way into the circle of knowing and all that to, to take her sister's place. She knew nothing of all this this war and crap. And it's just, it's just, it's, it's almost really no wonder that she can't understand why people won't fight back against injustice because she really hasn't lived it for herself. And it's why she, she just has so much issue of why these people are so complacent with this, because to her, it seems in the natural way, you know, that, hey, this isn't right, let's do something about it. But because she doesn't li have to live under that banner, she doesn't understand, you know, as as the Domans have actually told us. The Alamegans really don't tell us, n make light of this, and the Domans do, which is why I'm way more sympathetic to the Domans, that they explain why they're complacent, but at the same time, they tell you that they're not happy that 
this is what they've resorted to either. They just feel they're in a really crappy situation and this is the better of the two options. And both of them really, really kind of suck. And, you know, for them, there is no light at the end of the tunnel. Lise can easily see the light at the end of the tunnel because she's been there. She's lived it, you know. So for her, it, it, it just seems like the natural, you know, just, just the natural path. But... You know, life is just, and especially, you know, when empires come and take over and annex your lands or whatever, it's just simply not that easy and not that simple. And she wants to do the right thing because it's the right thing, but there, there are, it's a lot, there's a lot more complexities and, you know, pain and suffering that has to go into it. And some people have just had enough of that and they just don't want any more of that, you know, and... You know, they, you know, these people see it more as, you know, just, just, just keep going for, you know, another tomorrow. And, you know, sometimes it's, you know, that's, that's really all you can do. And had that conversation actually happened in, in such a way that they, you know, just, like I said, just compare and contrast how and why the Empire has affected their lives and, and their culture and their and their beliefs so much, I really think it would have benefited both characters, especially since that's the, really the first conversation they've had. They don't address each other in any sort of other scene prior to that point. They're just always, if ever, just in the same room, but don't interact. And I just feel it's such a wasted opportunity, especially since since they both want the same thing in the end. They 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 both want their people to to be happier and much better off. And they're around the same age too. And the game just kind of wasted. I mean, the scene in itself isn't that in and of itself that bad or anything like that. There's, I just feel there's a lot missing from it that they really could have taken advantage of for character development, especially in Lisa's case because they keep cutting back to her and their mindset. Take this development, take this mindset, do something with it, game. Please do something with it. And it's just, it's part of why this this whole thing just, just slogs on because you just keep having these scenes where something good might happen and then they just, it all just flatlines. But I've been rambled on enough, so we're gonna end this here. So thank you for watching, friends, and I shall see you next time.